morning, hot squall, yewen hot and squalling teat seats, nechlin jachemia kashaman, alison kuyen sna, tenachin kla chumulchasin ochumeo, skoho me sho, on wenak squallen, eotin sequetos. Good morning, my ancestral name is jachemia, my given name is alison. I come from the village of Capilano, from the Squamish Nation. Feels really good in my heart to be here and all my relations. Thank you very much for joining me live from my home during this COVID. We do know that our doors are shut, but our hearts are always open. We're very excited to be starting to work on some plans and understanding what we need to do to be able to reopen our doors and invite all of you into the building with all of us. We have had a lot of great things happen this week, especially with bringing home the bannock. I was so excited to get my bannock and chili, and you can find that on the website, www.slcc.ca. And if you're looking for videos to watch after we've recorded them live or other resources, you are more than welcome to go onto the website, uh, including backslash from home, and finding multiple exciting resources available for you to keep continue learning from your very own home. Thank you so much. And today we are going to be learning how to make a vase, and we're going to be doing two different options today. One is going to be with cedar, the inner bark. And I'm very excited as a Squamish lady to be able to have this as a resource from our community. And it's something that is really near and dear to me. And for those of you who don't have access to cedar or don't feel comfortable using our resources, then another option is to make a, a paper cup vase. So the two different things I'm going to be showcasing with you today. And we are going to start with the paper cup. So if you'd like to join me, I'll have a seat right over here. This here is our, is our cedar um, replacement material where it's the cup and I'm using wool for the weaving. You're going to need a paper cup, some wool, and some scissors. I happen to have this cup right here. And for those of you who would like to learn this technique, all you need to do is cut some lines into the cup like so. I kind of like to do one and then go to the opposite side, do another one down and then I come in the middle of that line that I just did, one on the opposite end here and then I will go in the middle of all of those areas that I just created, cutting down to the base, leaving the base intact. Don't expect to fill this with any sort of beverage after we're done weaving. Following that, we'll get some wool. And I just like to put a little bit of a knot at the end here. Maybe one more. so that when we start our weave, it'll hold it in place. From here, what you're going to do is you're going to take your end piece and put it on the inside of the cup, in between one of these slits, all the way down to the base. And then we're going to work with our long piece. 
we're going to go over one of our tabs here and then we're going to go behind the other tab like so. We're going to, oh, get that guy out of there. And we're going to continue this over under pattern until we get all the way to the other end. I think I might need to cut one more slit, but let's see when we get there. Yeah. See how we did even amount of slits? And if we continued with this pattern, we would be going over the same ones that we did previously. So if you're running into that, what you can do is you can, this one's a little thin, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for a thicker one. That one looks a little thicker. And I'm gonna split that one in half. And this way, your pattern is going to work out perfectly. So we'll get our piece right back in there. See how it's just holding on in there? Down to the base, over, under, over, under, all the way around. And now since we've cut that additional strand, it's going to offset our pattern. So now on the first row, I started over, and now on the second one, I'm behind that one. And then we're gonna continue with over, under, all the way around. And this will help bring that checkerboard, also known as that tabby weave, to life. There we are. And you can continually go around your piece until you make it all the way to the top. If you want a tighter weave, you can just move your lines down like so. If you're using a thicker material like this wool, it won't take as much to get you all the way to the top. If you're using a thinner wool like the purple one here, then it'll need a little bit more string as, as you're not covering as much space as you're working. So for those of you who are following along, feel free to continue that process, spiraling around your weave until you get to the very top. Those of you who would like to see how the cedar bark works, we have an example of some inner bark here that I have used taken bits of to be able to show you how to make a basket. So this is the beautiful inner bark here. And you can see there's a little bit of sap on this piece. You can see that other than that, there's not very much outer bark at all on it, but it's a great material to work with when it's wet, it's nice and flexible. And even more so when you thin it out, which I've done. I have some pieces over here. Because cedar is known as the tree of life, it gives us everything that we need to survive and as well as feeds our, our mind, body, and our soul. We use this material for baskets, we use it for clothing, baby diapers, all sorts of things. But there's only a specific small window of time when you can harvest the inner cedar bark and then it actually has to sit away for about one year and that way it is cured. After that, you soak it in warm water for about 24 hours and then you can start splitting it and man manipulating it into the different size and widths you would like it for the different projects you're gonna be making. Be making a hat, can be making all sorts of things with this stuff. And as you can see, it's nice and flexible. I've had it just soaking in regular water. And from here, what we're gonna do is we are going to have a few pieces. So I'm just gonna push these off to the top of my table here. 
And we're gonna do a tabby weave to start with. So let's get a few pieces. I like that side. Lined up here. And then we're gonna get a few pieces lined up the opposite way and woven from the center, creating our tabby weave. Also included with the materials, not only do you need inner cedar bark when you're using it for weaving baskets, you will need a, a mold. Some people are very good at freehanding. I'm not there yet. Um, so today I'm using a Pringles canister and I have this tool here which will help me keep my cedar nice and close as well as an elastic band to keep my cedar formed onto my mold here. I also have some sinew that will help us lock in our weaves as we go. So we want to make sure it's nice and tight. And from here, we're just going to build it. So we'll put another one this way. Put another one this way. <laughs> I did that one the same. So it needs to be opposite, over one, under one. There we are. We're making sure it's nice and even. We want to start from the very center of our pieces, working our way outwards. Draw another one over here. So I'm just picking up the warps that were covered on the line previously. I'm raising my cedar so it's the opposite of the line before. Build it out a little bit more. Like so. Let's get another one going. And depending on the size of your mold, that's how big your base will be. So currently my base is about this big. That's not going to be quite enough to fill this base of my Pringles can here. So I'm going to need a few more slices. Let's put that off to the side for now. Let's see, about there is a good length. This one's quite large, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split it. Just like that, easy like butter. And it's also a little thick as well. So from here, Next, grab a knife and thin it down. Like so. And then you have two pieces. From here, you can actually split it down one more time if you like. And actually, let's give that a whirl. Right down this way here and peel. Oh, didn't want to split there. It's okay. Sometimes it does that. But we still have two, these two beautiful pieces as well as this beautiful piece here. And let's 
see. Still a little bit wide, I think. So let's thin that down a little bit right there. And we can add this one in. Continuing with our over under pattern. Like so. Keep measuring. It's about there. Perfect. So now that it'll fit around the base, we can grab some of our sinew. You can also use the inner cedar bark or other materials to be able to do this twining technique. But just so everyone can see the difference of the patterns and I decided to go with a black sinew today. Folding it in half. Finding a warp that we can anchor it on after we folded our sinew in half. Taking the one on the back, bringing it behind our next warp. Pulling it not too tight, but nice and snug. Now this one's our back one. Behind, nice and snug. Grab your, uh, your back one, come behind the next one. And continue on until you get to your other end of this row. Oh, that was the same one I just did here nice and tight that tool I was talking about we can just push it so it sits nice and flat and in line back one Crisscross behind the next one, and now we're going to be coming down this way, taking the back one, bringing it behind the, the warp, taking the back one, bringing it behind the next empty warp, back one again, behind the next empty warp. There we go. Last one on this side. There we are. And it's a little bit weird doing it that way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up my piece. I'm gonna rotate it. <laughs> Hi, Opie. So Make sure your strings aren't tangled. Get to the back string and crisscross it. Bring it around the first one on this side here. And we're just gonna continue this pattern until we get to the other side. If you wanted to continue doing multiple rows of this, then that is your personal preference and you are more than welcome to do so. Everybody is their own artist. Everybody has their own personal flair and you're more than welcome to, to do so at your leisure. I like to pull, hold my finger here, pull one, pull the other, make sure it's nice and in line. Rotate this one more time. Here's my back one, bringing it under the warp, back one, bringing it under, back one, got a few more strands to go, and we're back to our starting one. If you wanted to continue with this technique, you would just continue on the uh, building upon the first row 
as you go along. And then I'm just going to do a quick little tie so they don't lose their, their place. I'm just going to cut off some of this excess so it's not in my way for now. And at this point, I would really like to look at my cedar and see the patterns, the colors, the grains on either side. And from here, depending on what side we have face down, will be the side that we see on the base when we are weaving. So let's, let's go with this side down because I really like that color. Make sure everything's nice and straight. It looks like this side's a little bit shorter than the other, so I'm just gonna hold my hand on my weaving, pull each warp gently so that I'm gaining more length on this side over here. There we are. Beautiful. Grab your mold. You could use anything really that um, you think can sustain a little bit of water because remember it needs to be moist when we're working with it. Place it down to the center of your piece. And from here, we can fold up and try to make sure that our lines stay where we need them to be. They're not folded around. And then we're gonna place it up next to our, our base on all four corners. To get a little bit tangled on the way, that's okay. You can adjust. Here we go. And <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. There we are. And the elastic band is really just to hold everything in place while you're working. So I can tell this one has been flipped. So I'm just going to line these guys up to where exactly I need them. You can hear my husband really concentrating while he's filming this. Thank you so much. <laughs> there goes Shreddy's running around because she is awesome. I guess um, I could have put some rocks inside this Pringle can, give it some weight to hold it down. So here we go. They're all pretty much lined up. And you notice I had to add an extra warp in our cup when we were weaving it. And for those of you who are weaving with the cup, hopefully you're doing well. Thank you for carrying on. But we're gonna need to do the same thing with this one here. So we're gonna find a warp that is nice and thick, like this guy here. We're gonna split it in half. So that makes it into two. Add it back. Here, there we go. Now, what we're gonna need to do is grab a very long piece of our inner cedar bark or another material that you would like to use for the weaving, making sure it's nice and wet and flexible. I like to have start it on an angle, like so. So when we're building a pond, it doesn't have a blunt end where we started. 
So I'm going to just place this down and these guys I'm going to try to push inside so I don't weave them into my project. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with the tapered end of our cedar bark and we're going to weave over, under, over, under, again that tabby weave, placing it close to the base, try to keep everything nice and tight and in line. So we've done this section right here and from here gonna roll it start working with our long piece but don't pull it too tight or else this is just gonna come right out have a look I was under so now I need to go over under over under this section of warps here weaving my cedar bark through Just get your pattern in first. We can go about tighten up this row when we get to the other end. Rotate it. Continue with our pattern. So I was under. So now I'm over, under, over, under. All the way. Last side here, over, over, under, over, under, over, under, pulling it through, making sure my cedar bark is nice and flat, not twisted around, which it is. <laughs> there we go. Go back and tighten up my warps a little bit here. And then from here you want to make sure that it is tight for your first, just like so. I just pull on either end and then we can build upon that layer by spiraling around with this weave as we go. I'm just gonna make sure that I'm all in the right spot before I do so. Over, under, 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 over, under. And that's why I was trying to tuck these pieces in. So see how they're kind of popped back out again. Let's try to get them out of our way so we don't get them tangled around. If you could try to get it inside the base or maybe have a needle and place it somewhere else so it's out of the way, that's perfect. Okay, so this one we are over. So that means we're coming under this one right here we were under so that means we're going to go over we're doing the opposite of the line previously to create that checkerboard pattern making sure our cedar bark isn't twisted along the way make sure our warp stay tight as we go if they're getting a little bit loose Maybe you can double it like so to keep it a little bit tighter. Yeah, there we go. And that way they stay where they're supposed to. And just make sure every time you do move your warps, you get them back to where they belong. It helps ease the process of the weaving. There we go. And then we 
just continue this process spiraling around our base with our weaving and building upon layer by layer. So excited that the new CD that our Squamish Loa Cultural Center staff have created is currently for sale on our website. Got myself a copy when I'm doing my crafts. I love to listen to it, hearing some of the beautiful songs of my beautiful co-workers that have, they either created themselves or are from ancient origin. And it's just amazing. So if you're a crafter and you enjoy listening to music while you do so, feel free and make your way to the website and the shop area and pick yourself up at your very own copy. Just using my fingers for now. Making sure it all stays tight close to the base. Making sure my warps stay nice and tight. And we're just going to keep spiraling and building upon the work that we've done. If there are any artists that are from Squamish or Lowat Nations that are watching the video, whether it be live or after, feel free and Send us an email if you would like to be a part of our artist directory that we are currently making. It's something that's going to live on our SLCC website where we're going to showcase artists from the communities, whether they are bakers, chefs, performance artists, visual artists, and so much more, that you are welcome to join us for this initiative. You can find myself reach out to me I'm happy to give you all the information and for those of you who are not from Squamish or Lowat and would like to know more about our artists this initiative should be launched by the summer so I'm really excited to be a part of it and hopefully hopefully so will you thank you so much Over, under, over, under. We still have some chili left, don't we? Mmm, I'm excited. The bringing home the bannock is for either the chili, the chowder, a beautiful um, dessert, as well as the bannock. And it's for serving of four, since it's just me and my husband here. I'm very excited that we'll be able to have it a couple of times. And I'm thinking that's going to be my lunch. Mm -mm -mm. Or breakfast, maybe? Just kidding. <laughs> Some people like to keep it a looser side. Some people like to do more of a tighter weave. Again, everybody is their own artist. And so you are more than welcome to add your personal flair. This is just one of many ways that you can create this beautiful vase. And if you wanted to add some twining in there, that's definitely a possibility. If you have a tool like this or an awl, you can use it to help bring your lines nice and tight next to each other so you have a beautiful tight weave. So we're going to carry on. going behind all of the warps that were covered in the row previously. Making sure your cedar isn't getting twisted along the way so everything sits nice and flat.
Cause we're weaving, 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 and we're weaving, weaving, weaving. I know you guys can't smell it, but cedar bark smells so good. Very therapeutic. bit of ways to go. You paper weavers with the cup weaving must be getting close to being finished right now and I hope you enjoyed that experience. For those of you who are wondering how to finish it off, what I did is I did just the same as our starting, tucked it on the back side I made some knots so that it doesn't unravel and I just pushed it down through the wool that was on the inside and then you have your beautiful little cup. You can add your flowers, your paper flowers that you made last week with me and there's a beautiful gift for Mother's Day for yourself <laughs> or anybody really. So, getting closer and closer to the end of my cedar bark here. And depending on how tall you want your base, that's how far you're going to go. the more prone it is to being able to flip around to keep your eye out on that and sometimes people just like to do one piece of cedar bark in one round and then they do a line of twining and then they do another cedar bark and then they do another line of twining so or, uh, the possibilities are endless even using wool right now instead of the cedar bark is a possibility or other materials one of my favorite exhibits at the squamish low cultural center in whistler was actually a woven car it was an old school car that was totally gutted it was just the frame and the artist used all sorts of recycled material to weave the entire car it was one of the coolest things I've ever seen when it comes to weaving. There was a woven Sasquatch, there was cedar, there was wool, there was plastic that was used to, to weave. There was all sorts of materials. It was so cool. I believe it was done by Annie Ross. We're weaving, 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 and we're weaving, weaving, weaving. Getting close to the end here.
So for those of you who want to make your base even taller, you're more than welcome to continue on and weave and weave and weave. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know how to add on, I can show you. You want to have another piece of cedar bark similar to the one that you started off with matching the thickness of your piece and you would literally weave over top of your weave you just did so if this is my end piece here grab another piece that was similar in, in size and place it over top Connecting them like so, and then you would be able to weave with your nice long piece again. Again, don't pull too hard, this will come right out. And once it dries, it'll be nice and secure. So you can add on by doing it that way there, but due to time, we will not be adding on to my piece here so I can show people how to do the finishing touches. Let me get a few more pieces in here. If you are following along, please let me know where you're following along from. If you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know that I love to see the work that people have created using these techniques and I would appreciate you sharing them with us. So I, it gives me great joy to be able to see people using the, the teachings that I'm sharing in the real world. my cat <laughs> I was like what's happening <laughs> oh, my cats think that we're their pets <laughs> as many of you pet owners may know see how blunt my end is here I just like to taper that down finish this off there we go from here, we almost have a beautiful basket. It's a little rough around the edges. And what I suggest is pulling every warp. So, just like so, and pulling it nice and tight. Going around in order of warp, keeping them nice and line and in tight. can see how it really brings it together, tightening all your work, to making it look quite beautiful. That looks better already. You can also go back, use your awl or whatever tool you have available to you to be able to tighten up your weaves. So that they sit nice and close and in line with each other. If your cedar is starting to dry out, go ahead and just give it 
a little bit of a, a mist with a water bottle, dunk it back in your bucket of water, grab some water in your hand, place it on anything to be able to keep that cedar soaked so that it's nice and manipulate. Uh, you can manipulate it to the different shapes and areas and designs you are creating. From here, grab some more sinew. We're going to lock in our weaves by doing another row of twining. You can leave your elastic band on if you like, or you can take it off. Anchor onto a warp. Back one comes around. Back one comes around all the way, all the way around. <laughs> Back one comes around, creates that crisscross effect. There's many ways to finish off a basket and Everyone is their own artist, as I always love to mention, and depending on where you're from, you may have different teachings in regards to finishing the basket, or you just want to add your own little flair as well, so you're more than welcome to do so. This technique will lock in all of our tabby weaving that we did with the cedar, so it doesn't unravel. Almost getting to the other end here, or I guess about halfway through. So we'll just keep grabbing the back one, bring it around the next warp that hasn't been used, continuing crisscrossing our strings so that everything's locked in beautifully, making sure it's nice and tight and in line. at a time. And there we are back to the beginning. Try to open up this a little bit here so that I can Grab the string, bring it here, just tie it off for now. And depending on which way we should edge it, I think I want to do fringe. So we're going to grab one more piece of our sinew here. And then this time we're going to fold our warps down like so. So I just folded it down, leave, left a little bit of room so that I can anchor my sinew that I folded in half. Use your finger to hold it in place. I'll try to use my finger to get these guys out of the way here as well. And then we're going to fold down the next one. Try to keep it the same, same height. Bring your back one around. Fold. Trying to keep that height the same. Take your back one. And bring it around. 
So that's one way. You can continually do that around your piece till you get to the other side, connect them like we did this sinew here. And you can then break these apart, making them really thin, spreading them out, cupping them to the height or length that you would like them as, and you can go from there. That's one way of doing it. Another way, I have it down here a little easier. Anchor it around one piece. Fold it off to the side, like so. Take your sinew, bring it around the next orb, down, take that piece, fold it on an angle, and then bring this piece in front. Take your back piece of sinew, wrap it around. down, try to keep it all in line, bring this guy around, swing that over here, it gives you a little bit more of a, a different sort of edge, nice and tight and in line like so, continuing around your piece. So there's a couple of different ways that you can finish off your basket or you can take your cedar and you can weave it back through the last line. <laughs> and if you angle your cedar bark, it should help make it able to weave it through back down like so and then that sinew will hold it in place and then from there you can continue on with that practice that's where this tool comes in handy opening up that area for you to place the warp back down not going through the sinew, but just the bark. And then for the other ones, you don't go down this one because there's no area, so it's on actually the second row. Pull it down. And then you can cut Depending on the length, you could fringe it out. So that means pulling, 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 pulling. You do that to all of them. You have this nice little fringe going on here. Nice small pieces. Like so. Or you can take them and you can cut them nice and close. Like that. And then you would do whatever technique you would do. You would do it around the entire piece. Take it out. And then I would suggest taking all of your sinew pieces, making sure they're nice and tied and locked in place, and then just keep them on the inside because who really cares? <laughs> <laughs> and then you have a beautiful basket. This piece here, you could also weave it so it sits on the inside.
So what I'm doing is I'm just seeing this gap, pulling it nice and close. If I need to taper it some more, feel free and do so, but now it's in there. So we're good. <laughs> Thank you very much for each and every one of you for joining me to see some some of the techniques we have with using our inner cedar bark. Those of you who understand that this is a limited resource and it's best to use in our community and for, for using other materials like the cup and the wool, I really appreciate you and thank you so much for joining me today. Go back to the website, have a look around, see what's new, what we got going on. If you're in the Whistler area, if you need some chili chowder, we're doing the bringing home the bannock on Tuesdays and we're really looking forward to our indigenous youth ambassador training program if anyone's interested in a partial um, at home or a partial in the building program let me know thank you so much and have a wonderful day